In today's YouTube video, I'm going to help you guys better understand how to manipulate cover zero defenses by understanding exactly what happens when you block your running backs or your tight ends. Let's get into it. What is up guys, Zane from the Zane Madden YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to attack cover zero in a more smart way by understanding exactly what happens to the players that are guarding your blocking running backs and tight ends. A lot of players don't know what secondary coverage rules are for man coverage defenders. And in this video, I think we can teach you guys a little bit about how to manipulate or how to set up your route combos based off of what you think your opponent is in. All right, let's go ahead and take the field here. With this particular play, what we're gonna do is we're just going to call a little cover zero and talk about the secondary coverage rules of this defense. So in a cover zero, obviously we have safeties that are in man to man on the running back and the tight end. These are usually the players that you guys will utilize to protect yourself against heavy pressure. So starting off, obviously we know that Minka Fitzpatrick, if Derrick Henry runs a route, will guard Derrick Henry. But if Derrick Henry actually stays in to block, this player actually has a secondary coverage rule. So that coverage rule actually means that when we run this play, which traditionally against cover zero, you would say, all right, well, let's go ahead and try to get some man-to-man -man beaters both to the inside and the outside of the field. So you just kind of mesh and set up some, you know, inside options, some outside options, give yourself lots of areas of the field to attack. But this player that is on Derrick Henry actually will drop into a middle third. This applies to left safeties, left side safeties. So if we block this, you'll note that he plays the middle third, which makes it really tough for us to throw that ball to Julian Edelman because if they have a knockout ability or if they're just there flat out on that, they can make a pick or, you know, potentially force a drop that is caught by somebody else on a pick artist. So that's something that you need to understand as it pertains to setting up your blitz beater. So let's say we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm pretty sure what we ran was corner post, corner slant, I believe it was, something that looked a little bit like this. If Derrick Henry were to stay in and block, we know that that post to Edelman is gonna be covered. However, what about a delay route? So if we were to use a check and release on this, he's technically on a pattern, which would allow us to then set up a protection, which would make the man on Derrick Henry bite down, leaving that post wide open. Now, fortunately for the defense, there was a SWAT on that play, but you can see that basically that player was guarding Derrick Henry. Or if we were thinking about it in a more simplified manner, not utilizing a check and release, if we wanted to run that same route combo where Derrick Henry attacked the flat, we would just basically open up the middle of the field by blocking the tight end. So what this is gonna do here is this is gonna open up the middle of the field for us to throw the ball to Julian Edelman. This is something that I've actually taught before. It's actually on gridirongameplans.gg. I put it out about two months ago, and this is something that I've taken to insane details to actually improve my zone defensive setups. But if you guys wanna check that out, it's all on the website in the vault. I believe it's the January and the February vault. You guys can get everything I've done all year long on the website for $9.95, and that includes all the offensive and defensive game plans, Discord access, and live lab sessions inside that Discord channel every single Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Now, that brings us to our next point. There are other safeties on the play. What? No, no way. So with this setup, let's go ahead and take a look at the point of view from the safety on the right, or the defense's left, which is guarding the tight end, Gronkowski. Because we use Gronkowski to pick this up, the secondary coverage assignment of this player is actually not to double team this receiver. This is actually an outside third. A lot of players don't know this about this game, but Basically, if you have a safety on the right side of the field manned up to a blocking player, they will drop into an outside third. So that's why the middle of the field was open for Julian Edelman is because this guy was drifting into the deep left outside third of the field while everyone else was playing man under. That's why we were able to throw that post in the middle of the field. So basically, if you're trying to attack the middle of the field with an offensive route combination, but you wanna block your running back, you have to make sure that the safety on the play is not manned up on the running back. So let's take a look at Spinner, for instance, right here. So here we are in Spinner, and I've modified this a little bit to make it so the safety is in man-to-man -man on the running back on the left. 
we know that if we wanted to attack the deep middle of the field with our X receiver, we actually would have to block the tight end because blocking work done would make that safety end up drifting into a middle third. So work done is a better option for us to send out on a route. Blocking Gronk would be better in this regard, which would allow us to then attack the middle of the field to Justin Jefferson. However, let's say in this example, we're facing Spinner and I wanna attack the deep outside right portion of the field, but I also wanna block the tight end. In this situation, it would be smarter for us to actually probably not attack that deep outside because what's gonna end up occurring in this example is the guy on Gronk is gonna drop into the outside third on the right, which is not gonna let, allow us to throw our corner out over the top of that man-to-man. -man. Provided that we would have beat the man-to-man -man either way, there was still gonna be help. So in all reality, what we would have needed to do on this is block Gronk, and if we were looking to get a player open deep down the right side, we would have had to have utilized motion and that would have been a runoff route for the outside third. So now in this situation, we know that the guy that is manned up on, let's actually go ahead and do this real quick. I'll man up this player just real quick, and then we'll man up B here. Um, in this situation, the player manned up on Gronk is gonna drop into an outside third, which means that we need a runoff route for this. Now, I'm actually going to just make sure that the pass rush doesn't come in here by spying a couple of these guys. But you guys get the gist with this in this cover zero situation. If we're gonna run this, we have to run off that deep outside zone to open up the sideline for us to throw the ball to our corner route. Because the man that we are blocking forces the safety into that zone assignment. So it's thinking layers ahead within your offensive play call that allows you to be able to attack the areas of the field based off of where the player that is guarding your extra blocker drops to. So if it is a left side safety, they drop to the middle of the field. If it is a right side safety, they drop to the deep outside right of the field. This means that anytime that you are attacking a cover zero, if you are blocking the player that the right side safety is on, you have to run off that safety with your route combo in order to attack the deep right sideline. If you are going to attack the middle of the field, it's probably best to make sure that the running back is not staying into block, allowing that left side safety to drop into the deep middle. And the left side of the field against cover zero is always gonna be the best side of the field to attack because safeties do not drop into those areas of the field when you block a cover zero blitz. So I hope that today's video helped you guys out, taught you a little something about secondary coverage rules in Madden how to set up your route combinations against them, how to better put yourself in position to block them and put together smarter route combinations. If you guys like today's video, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, drop those below. I was interested in hearing what you guys have to say about these types of videos that I do here on the channel. If you have any if you have any request, I can't talk. If you have any requests for video topics, make sure you guys put those below. We'll see you guys a little bit later with our next short or tomorrow with our next long form video update. Until then, this is Zan. Get in the lab and good luck.